Five hundred and nine billion. Like I said, not make a prediction. It's because the lid is off. There is no lid right now. We've had lids before. And what does that mean? That means the definition of the Batman head originated during the time of the fork, the original Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash fork. Before that, we had what you would call a lid on the altcoins. Everyone and their grandmama knew that no altcoin before that damn fork was going to blow off. Everyone knew it. It would, Everything was going down 20% and up 20%. Kind of like we've been seeing the last few days. Um, but drastically bigger. And what I was doing during that time was selling bat um, up and down. But that was because it had a lid. I wasn't afraid, right? I could sell them the whole lot. That's the thing. I wasn't nest egging during that time. I was taking haymakers. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. They're going to come again. I say it's so a once that version. You're going to get similar opportunities. It's not going to be just like that, but you got to watch them because there's times it's, you can't predict the future, but there's times in this market where you damn, you might as well have the future right in your hands. Because if you knew that the altcoins could never blow because the fork news and they had that artificial lid on them. That means every time it gained 20%, you could sell your whole lot and then it would dip 20%. You could buy it back and then you could just keep doing that over and over again without fear of it just going to the moon, right? Because I always have nest eggs because I don't want to miss the moon trip. However, if the moon is shut off by a lid, and you know there's no moon coming anytime soon. You could do that and make a lot of money without missing out. Now the lid is off. I told everybody the lid is off. There's no fucking lid here. So if you go to do that and sell your whole lot, like let's say you did that with EOS. So let's say you did that with um, Populous. I don't know any of these coins that have went parabolic. You missed your moon trip. And they're still, they're not even at the moon yet. They're still on the destination. But there was no, you know, there's no lid. So you got to be, it's a, it's a much trickier game now. The nest eggs are all important now. Because this is the time to shine. You never know what altcoin is going to go parabolic. And that's why it's so, so important to pick altcoins that A, you know aren't scams. B, you know have a working strong team. Bitcoin is doing all the heavy lifting for everyone right now. Coins like PayPal. One part, dry grass, one partnership, that's the spark, blows like fire. No limit coin, one big announcement, one exchange. Uh, there's so many coins, EOS, one, anything, anything at this point, holy, EOS is just set the, the blow, right? And that's the one thing that the Bitcoin and the Ethereum and even the Litecoin, they have to, they have to, they're the grandpas. They're the they're the olders, the elders, these youngins. Although Bitcoin Cash is like a clone of an old man, but kind of came out fit and fast, so it's kind of a weird, weird dynamic there. And then you got EOS is just like a ninja, and um, you know it's cool. Ethereum's blowing up. Let me go to the market real quick. Bitcoin seventeen thousand holding strong. That is very amazing because think about it. Anytime we have these big run-ups, you usually have a, a pretty big dip. And people can say, you know, it went to 19, um, dropping to 16 is a pretty big dip. But it's like, man, really? Like, it went to 19 from like 8 in a few days. I mean, I wouldn't consider that even a drop at all. Like, the fact that it didn't go below 10K, except for that one, and it like flirted with 9, and that was it, basically. Um, it's holding very strong. The 24 hour volume has, it's like 10 bill is the new, the new men now. It's like the 24 hour volume has just hit another level. And these numbers are Like I said, it's funny money. All these are funny money. These numbers are just going to keep growing and growing and growing due to the inflation of the fiat world. And we're not just dealing with the USD. We're dealing with all the currencies in the world. Imagine all those fucking countries with all that inflation, all that's getting soaked up. By the crypto market. Ethereum, over $700, $730. These guys are benefiting girls. You know, Ethereum could be a guy or a girl. I don't want to discriminate. 
Bitcoin and Ethereum and Litecoin are tremendously, tremendously benefiting from being on Coinbase because the U.S. market has finally, what did I say? Around Christmas time, end of the year, especially in January, you're going to see these coins in the tops absolutely explode because people are getting into it. They're getting their Bitcoin. They're throwing down a thousand dollars. They're saying, oh, I'm going to get like 0 0.01 Bitcoin. What the hell? You know, like they're not, um, you know, 0 0.05 or some shit. Like it's not very attractive. Bitcoin is the big guys are buying Bitcoin, the big dogs. That's what's driving this price up. The little guys are buying it there, um, Litecoin. Um, they're, they're seeing that it's something that they can afford when you only have three cryptocurrencies when you sign up. Ethereum's benefiting from that too. All three of them are, right? They're just, they're just blowing each other up. And when Litecoin doubled, I was looking at Ethereum and I was just like, man, Ethereum's next. That was when I was like 450 because it's the only one that didn't just go parabolic. The cool thing about Ethereum is it's like, yeah, you have Bitcoin, you have Litecoin, but a lot of people are liking the mystery behind Ethereum because they're not quite sure what it is. It sounds prolific, like this wild, you know, this big world supercomputer. It's like um, the operating system for the world, decentralized, like, you know, they like Vitalik. He seems like a very smart guy when you research him. So Ethereum just going to keep on riding this bull. Uh, rumors Ripple Bitcoin Cash will be added to Coinbase. Now that's going to shake the whole fucking foundation. Because then you got, that's going to sit on Litecoin's couch and that's going to sit on Bitcoin's couch. Bitcoin Cash is going to put his big old stank ass right in between both of them and absorb all, a lot of fucking market share. That's what I'm predicting. Um, it's just a cheaper Bitcoin. People are just going to look at it just like they did with Litecoin. By that time, Litecoin could almost be as much as Bitcoin Cash. And when Bitcoin Cash is added, rumors... I mean, I'm not going to say it's a guarantee. Um, I would not bet against it at this point. Let's just put it that way. And um, Ripple too. I mean, Ripple is just like going to be sense. People aren't going to see that it's fucking got this ridiculous supply. And that's just, that's not even the total. That's nothing. That's a, <laughs> Ripple has so many coins. Look at this. It's almost a hundred trillion. So this is a very, very expensive coin. <laughs> 100 trillion guys but people don't look at that they don't care they're like it's 50 cent it's gonna be the next bitcoin and then they're all gonna buy it and it's gonna go to high fucking heaven it's 50 cents right now ripple is just going parabolic and the same thing's gonna happen with bitcoin cash somebody's gonna have a thousand bucks and everybody like, dude it's the cheaper bitcoin they're gonna hear um roger veer on cnbc they're gonna hear all of these people that's why i said don't underestimate it man like i don't know people it's kind of like being in a movie and i'm like chilling with the Jedi and you see Bitcoin cash and it's like looking like Darth Vader and people are like, Oh, that's Darth Vader. He's a bitch. I mean, I don't know, man, that fool could fucking choke you without even touching you. So like, yeah, dude's on some, on some real shit. It's like, don't underestimate anybody in this game. Um, so that, that's my forecast. All of the coins, all of these coins are going to be going up. Not sure about Iota. Iota might might get left a little bit behind in the, unless it does get added to Coinbase. I think it's like the era of the Coinbase and we're going to have this little just like crazy run because it's like Coinbase is kind of filtering all of this traffic and all of this money and the, the walls there are so thin. And if you always notice Ethereum, every, I, don't, I haven't even checked, but I can guarantee you it's the most expensive on GDAX. Let's bet. 743 it's the most expensive it's the, always the most expensive on gdex the walls are thin there so it's going to drive up the price because let's say ethereum is trading at 500 and then you see on gdex the biggest exchange where all the traffic is is going for 700 you're going to buy up all of it on the other exchanges i mean that's just it's natural right so that's what's happening with these prices uh, is it artificial i, I wouldn't say it's, it's artificial in a in a vastly undervalued space, if that makes sense. So it's like, overall, no, it's not undervalued because I have very high price tags for a lot of these coins. But at the same time, it's being artificially raised right now because of what's happening with the Coinbase and GTEx. So in a way, it's kind of like, yeah, it's being artificially raised, but it's going to be sunk because it's actually valuable. Um, and that's what the, the market's going to decide. I mean, EOS, holy crap, right? Almost seven dollars at six dollars and seventy three cents. Um, that I mean, people who that's the thing, you know, EOS isn't on Coinbase. 
none of these things. Just imagine. If people don't think EOS can't be as popular as Ethereum, they're out of their mind. EOS is going to have more money. And people know about Steemit. And the one thing about Steemit is as it grows, EOS's popularity grows because the freaking guy who made it. I just said freaking. The fucking dude that made it, Dan L. He can post and the whole world of Steemit's going to see it. So it's like he has his... Uh, he has his ultimate social media. It's like, yeah, it's like he created the new semi Facebook, Cora, whatever you want to call Steam. It's just, it's cool. And he can just get, you know, he has so, he's so undervalued when people actually think of how powerful Dan L really is and his, and his connections in this game. Um, you know, BitShares is blowing up. All of his coins are, are successes and gangsters. So I don't know why people underestimate EOS. And that's another thing. One sec. I said I wouldn't be caught. You, I am not. I wouldn't be the guy that did not buy EOS at fifty cents. I said that over and over again. Just like I wouldn't have been the guy that didn't buy Ethereum at ten dollars. I'm not the guy. When I see something that's that prolific, that has that much potential, I don't really care. I'm going to invest in it because the pain of not investing in it is much, much, much further. So, uh, and right now, things like Neo, I think, are super suppressed. You got to look at all these coins, all these coins that are doing things. It's really cool what's happening because a coin like Ethereum has risen so much. People get a little smarter. They get off of Coinbase. They start to do the research. And then you're going to start to see people say, oh, well, man, NEO is a similar project. Oh, EOS is a similar project. And these are going to kind of benefit from them too. Because look at how far away um, Ethereum and all of these other top coins have pulled away from NEO. NEO has just been chilling for a while. That's where I go. Um, I always, that's the thing. I make money and then I, I buy whatever's the cheapest on my want list. So I have the coins that I want. I have my nest eggs. I'm so diversified. I have all my nest eggs. Cool, right? I make money and then people say, well, what do you buy next? Whatever's the cheapest. Now, if I have a super, super full bag and it's like, okay, well, man, like buying any more of this coin won't really matter because if it succeeds, I'm a home run regardless. So it's like, it's just overkill. To the point where it's becoming lopsided on my investment. So then you have nest eggs that I just call are frozen. So the coin is done. I don't even, you know, it is what it is. I just put my work out and I do what I do. And um, don't even really worry about the price because it's a nest egg. Meaning I'm not looking to sell any. That, I have, you have to separate. Well, at least I do. I separate my nest egg from my, my trade money, my play money. My nest egg I don't fuck with. It's easier to be right if you just don't mess with it. It's kind of like if you had... You know, a, a 5,000 Bitcoin on your hard drive and you thought it was a good idea way back in the day and you just left it. You didn't play, you didn't play with it. That would have been a very small nest egg in 2011. If you're like, oh, you know, I'm going to invest a couple hundred dollars in Bitcoin and put it on, a, you know, this, this hard drive and I'm just going to forget about it. And then, you know, I'm going to trade with this money. That's what I that's what I did. And I'm never going to change my nest egg. That's how a lot of people didn't get rich is because you have to have a nest egg and then you have to forget that that nest egg exists. I would go homeless before I let my nest egg go. That's how serious I am with it. It's literally, I, I, it doesn't, it's not here anymore. It's in a different realm. I'm not ever, 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 ever going to touch it for at least however long I designated for my nest egg. The nest egg for me is at least two or three years, right? Because you don't want to put 10 years because we don't know what kind of rapid technology is going to come. Although I think blockchain is like, the, it's going to have the legs of the internet. So if you think of when the internet first came out, I think blockchain is going to have that same thing and people are just going to build on top of it, make it more advanced, more badass. But I think, you know, things like a Bitcoin, Ethereum, EOS, things like that can be the new protocols for the internet that the world builds on from here on out for the next 100, 200. If we're, if, you know, humans are even fucking lucky enough to be alive that long, if we don't blow each other up for some stupid reason. But that's what I look at. My nest eggs are frozen. That simple. I can look at my EOS and I can be like, holy shit, I want to go, you know. But there's no way. Hell, it could go to zero and I could bite my thumb off because I'd be so mad that I didn't take more profit, right? But I would bite my face off if I sold it and then it ended up going to $100. That's just the difference. Um, just whatever you're comfortable with. Like, like, you know, I have a different lifestyle. I just want to put that out there. Um, I, I'm on a different thing. A lot of people just want a, a couple mil, 
sit back, have a nice life. That's cool. Like I, I kind of envy that sometimes. I have, I don't know. I have like this wolf inside of me that just has to wander. I just, you know, I just have to keep going. I just have to keep going. It's not about the the content and the safetyness. It's kind of I'm, I don't like that. It gets very stagnant. I don't like that. I always like the rush. I always want to push things further. So, um, you know, maybe that's not for you. That's why I. I don't know. It's, uh, just, that's why my investment style is probably not something that a lot of people have seen. I just kind of looked at a quick market for you guys. Um, like I said, I'm going to be visiting my brother Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. He is in prison. Haven't seen him in a while. Going to fly to Florida. Um, see him. That's going to be awesome. Then going to go with my mom. Going to be able to make videos up there with my mom's. It's going to be cool. She's way, way up north. Got to fly across the whole country to see her. And I'll be back in January, but you know, you guys won't notice. I'll be back next week. So let's look at the market. Veritasium is doing nice. Just looking at my bags. Um, so I guess I can comment on what I have. Um, Bitcoin, obviously. Ethereum. Litecoin. Dash. Why did I say Dash? I don't have Dash. Eh, actually, let's not play this game because I have a lot of coin. Yes. Just looking. I actually have not looked at the market today. Um, bit shares. Wow. Like I said, it just keeps going up and up and up. Steam's just creeping on two dollars. Sea coins over a penny again. Just keeps going up. I mean, dry fire. Even Sea coin. One not, one partnership. People don't care. They flock. That's the new thing. It's kind of like the the remakes or the. All right. So first it was the. The ICOs, then it was kind of like the forks, and then it was kind of like the uh, rebranding. And now it's the news. The news is what's popping. It's crazy. You know, you see a coin like Namriota on some news that just go parabolic, billion dollar, 24 hour volume. Um, Walton's looking pretty good, just chilling. Kyber Network has not really done anything for me. I, I got into it a little while ago because it was under a dollar, it was like 80 cents. And I was thinking, man, it's so close to the ICO price. They raised a lot of money. Good team. Um, but that's the thing. You know, I didn't invest. It was, it was a smaller swing. But I'm not saying it's going to pop or anything. I'm just saying that it's been down. Not doing much. I like the coins that don't do much. Those are my fans. Like, I don't know. When I make, I'm so confident in all of my coins that when I make money, I want the coins to be cheap. So I can buy more of what I want, right? Like, that's just always the mindset. If all of my coins just mooned, yeah, that would be awesome. But at the same time, when I made money, it'd be harder to invest in something. Because it'll be like, man, I'm not getting a discount on anything. That's why it's always good to be diversified. So when the time comes and you have quote-unquote payday, quote-unquote money to invest, and you're diversified... It's so hard in this fucking game to, to invest in everything. Like, I pass up on a lot of gains... Because I learn each and one of my coins. I'm like, this is, I'm long on this coin. I'm long on this coin. I'm long on this coin. It takes a long time to find these coins. They're out there. You got to do your research. And then you got to have some balls and go. This is what I do. You got to, you know, I'm long. I find a coin and I'm long on it. I'm like, okay, done. Research is done. Going to always be checking updates, yada, yada, yada. But I'm comfortable with this investment. And then I move to the next one. But I can't be. I'm not that guy who's just hopping on every ICO, hopping on every. Like, I will gladly miss out on a ton of gains to do my slow style, my easy style of locking up nest eggs on projects I think are going to be around for five years. I have my criteria. We'll be around for five years. Is it a solid project? Is the team good? Bet, right? And it's something I believe in. And then I fill those nest eggs. So, um, it's very nice for me when I have extra income. I just throw it into one of these nest eggs again, right? Just like fill up the nest egg even more. And it's nice because then you have all these coins that you know, like the back of your hand. You know what prices they should be. What's a good price? What do you think it's going to be in the future? And you can say, hey, man, I'm diversified. It's like this is up. This is up. This is up. But man, you know, right here, boom, this is down. I can fill up my bag here. And you're always in a way, this is how I do it. You always just make a killing that way. Right, because then right when you buy it, it goes up and then the others go down. And it's just vice versa. You just constant. But the, the, the trend is it goes up. Things will go up. Things will go down. But then they always go when they go down, they always go a little lower. Right. And then because Bitcoin has been playing tricks. A lot of the coins have been staying around the same dollar price. But Bitcoin has just been going. And you got to think of Bitcoin is kind of like a 
it's kind of like a conveyor belt. And it's just going to bring these altcoins that are going to be successful, that are good altcoins with it. All the crypto benefits from Bitcoin battering down all of these resistant barriers. So it's just a really good thing. Whether you're invested in Bitcoin or not, you should always be rooting for Bitcoin. Um, not hating on any of the fucking forks. That's Bitcoin. The f- forking wasn't, it's allowed in Bitcoin. If you read, do some research, it wasn't recommended. It's actually kind of dangerous. All these people talking about forks. The one thing that has proven is Bitcoin is very immune to it now. It doesn't really give a fuck. Like it's very strong against forks. Um, so, but forks aren't really a good thing. They steal a little bit of a hash power. Um, it, it adds a little bit of confusion. It's hard for the wallet makers. We want the wallet makers to constantly focus on Bitcoin and the top altcoins. We don't want them focusing on all these stupid forks. Bitcoin Cash wasn't a stupid fork. I don't care what anybody says. That was needed. You had two communities. One wanted to go with bigger blocks. Nothing fucking wrong with that. It doesn't matter. Like if it's not what you believed in, it doesn't matter. Like anyone can do this. But now you got the Bitcoin diamonds and all this stupid shit. That's like that. I don't believe in those forks. I think those forks are a waste of time. Yeah, it's quote unquote free money, but it's only free money until it's not. Then it's starting to hurt Bitcoin. So I wouldn't be so pro on these fucking other forks coming out unless you listen to them and they're like, hey, man, this is something that's good. But, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, Bitcoin God coming out on Christmas. And I'm like reading it. It's like, well, what is it going to fucking do? Like, why are people happy about this? Like, it's not doing anything. I'm not, I don't believe in this fork. So I'm not happy with it. I don't, that's one thing. That's another mentality. So, uh, I believe that it was just a fad and you know, the, the more and more forks there are, the more and more joke. And then pretty soon people are going to just like one day have like a thousand forks when they go to put their private key in somewhere and they're going to realize like, oh wow, I got all these freaking forks and a lot of them aren't going to be worth anything. So but yeah, um, everything's looking good. 500 bill. Um, market is looking really great. I guess, you know, I'm going to be gone for a little bit. So I'm trying to see if, I mean, like I said, I have my nest eggs looking for, looking for what's on a discount, constantly looking at the news. News is money right now. If you can get ahead of the time, um, ahead of the news, um, make sure that, you know, you're not in a coin that's going to get blockbustered. Make sure that your coin, you know, what you're in is, working progressively not being lax not being you know content that's one thing that is disease in this game right now is being content you need a hungry coin you need a coin that's going after it you can't you know there's not there's too much money and too much um precious time right now to not be building and working your asses off whatever coins that you are envisioned on and also, it's funny how people treated Bitcoin once it hit $10,000. I see people who are reckless with their other coins, who just treat like EOS because it's a couple of dollars, like it's nothing, um, who treat, you know, coins that aren't expensive. I remember people who are just, you know, disrespecting Litecoins at $25. But you got to think, and, and even Bitcoin, when it was two, $3,000, people, you know, it wasn't as big of a deal. But once it hit $10,000, people treated Bitcoin much differently. I wonder... If you had that same mentality for all coins, no matter the price, you treated it like it was a you know twenty thousand dollar Bitcoin. I bet you would um you'd save a lot better, right? It'd be much easier to save those coins because people. It's very easy to get into a coin that's cheap and treat it like it's cheap, when in reality, Bitcoin was at two thousand dollars at one time this year. And people were treating it like it was two thousand dollars, like it was cheaper coin. But yet, later in the year, it turned twenty thousand dollars. So in theory, you could say that coin was always twenty thousand dollars if you were a nest egg holder. Therefore, you should have treated it that way. I treat Bitcoin like it's worth a hell of a lot more. Um, the, you know, these coins are there's finite amount, and the stampede is coming. So they're precious. Your projects, you should be. Loving those coins, really appreciating the work and the technology behind it. Uh, this is just, it's a fun time regardless, whatever you think about it. I think it's just a very fun time. Let's not lose sight of that. And yeah, just uh, set the lures for your good coins. Let's see this market just keep going up. What's uh, what's going to happen? Um, you know, I've been hearing there's going to be a pullback since $250 billion. We've doubled that. So we could just keep on steamrolling to $1 trillion by the time I get back. That would be amazing. Either way, I'm not surprised. Holding, studying, do the research, 
once in a lifetime opportunity um, would be very unwise in my opinion to let it pass up. So we'll kill it here. Cheers. Peace.